Hello, welcome to Calculus 1, Extra Help with Derivatives. Uh, in this section we're going to tackle the topic of what we call higher order derivatives. So up until now we've spent a ton of time explaining what a derivative is, uh, you know, slope of the line tangent to uh, the original curve, and so when you take that derivative you're getting a new function that describes the slope of your original function everywhere at every point. That's what a derivative is. So it's really the rate of change. How fast is your original function changing? We went through a ton of different uh, sections describing mostly different techniques uh, to take derivatives, but they're just applying to different types of functions. So as your functions become more complicated, you have to know a little bit, uh, some additional tools to be able to take those derivatives. And so that's what we've done up until now, right? We've done the chain rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, and all of those other uh, rules. This particular section is not really another rule of taking uh, derivatives. It's more of a concept, right? So I haven't really explicitly stated, but up until now in this course, when we have said, let's take the derivative, you know what that means. You know what it means. Let's go ahead and find a function that describes the slope of the original function. That's what a derivative is. But what I never really explicitly told you is that all of those derivatives that we were taking all the way up until now are always what we call first derivatives. They're called first derivatives. The only reason they're called first derivatives is because we only took the derivative one time. That's why it's called first derivative. So we have a function, we take the derivative one time, so we arrive at a new function. That function is called the first derivative because we only took one derivative. We only did the process one time. We get that first function, we call it the first derivative. And that function, just like we said, is describing the slope of our original function. Now, you start at function A and then you take the derivative and you get function B, so you have a new function down here. There's nothing to stop you from taking another derivative of that function again and arriving at a new function and then taking the derivative again and taking the derivative again and taking the derivative again. You can do that as many times as you want. It turns out that's what we call taking higher order derivatives, right? If we take the derivative two times, then we arrive at what we call the second derivative because we took the derivative two times. If we take the derivative three times, we call it the third derivative and the fourth derivative, and the fifth derivative, and so on and so on. Now the vast majority of what you're going to, to, to use in real life, in engineering, and science, and physics, is going to be first derivative, maybe second derivative, maybe sometimes third derivative. Uh, but it really just depends on what you're working on. You know, a lot of students will say, well these derivatives are great, but how do I know if I should use a first derivative or a second derivative? or a third derivative, or a fourth derivative. Well, it's not something that you just have to know. It just depends on the physics or the, the process that you're studying. So let me give you a practical example. Uh, when you're driving down the road in a car, if you're standing on the side of the road measuring how that car is moving, you could easily create a graph that describes the position of that car. Like let's say we have a starting line here, and we're measuring the distance from the starting line that this car is, is going as he, as he flies away from the starting line, as he goes forward, right? So at every inter interval of one second or so, we can measure how far away this car is. Maybe if he's going slow, he's not getting too far away, but as he speeds up, he's getting farther and farther away more quickly. But we could easily plot his position, his distance away from zero, from my starting line, as a function of time. And we would get a, a feel for you know, how far the guy's moving as a function of time. It's position, right? So if we were going to actually measure this uh, position, we would call it the position of a car we usually call it x of t. So this is how you would see it written in a physics book or even a calculus book or 